What's up YouTube, welcome back to the shop. I have a customer who wants a box. It needs to be modern, walnut, and it also needs to have a brass inlay in the lid. I'm excited about this one, so let's grab a slab and start working. I resaw this board in half, which is gonna be the lid, and I think it's gonna make for a really cool pattern, especially if I book match it. That grain looks fantastic, but I am gonna let these acclimate to the shop for a bit because whenever you resaw something, especially thick wood, the inside moisture content might be a little bit different than the outside. So I want all of this to rest, and in the meantime, I'm gonna work on the body of the box. In this case, it's gonna be about uh, 12 and a half inches square, so I'm gonna start breaking down some lumber. I cut all the pieces for my box, so now it's time to work on the joinery. I plan to do rabbits for this. So I'm gonna take one of these and I'm gonna cut a rabbit so that the other piece will fit into that. But before I do that, I wanna reinforce all my joints with dominoes. You can also use dowels too, it's the same process. But I do find it easier to drill the holes for the dominoes before I cut the rabbits. And then I can always take those dominoes and I can use a handsaw and trim them a little bit shorter so everything fits into place. I had a remnant of a walnut panel that I used for a previous project, and I had just enough that would also work for this box. So I went ahead and sanded that down and cut it to the size that I want. Then I was able to cut grooves on the inside faces of all my sides, and then dry assembled the entire thing together, including the dominoes to make sure it all fits. And I have to say, it looks fantastic. I really like it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-sand the inside faces. It's just gonna be easier to do that now than later glue the whole thing up together, and then we'll tackle sanding the outside. New day in the shop, I took the box out of the clamps and I went ahead and sanded the interior and the exterior. The exterior I only sanded to 120 grit because it's not gonna be the final sanding. When we put the lid on here, then I will sand everything down because I want the lid to be flush with the outside edges. Speaking of the lid, these are the boards that are gonna be the lid of the box. And this was a pretty thick slab that I resawed so we can do a book matched lid. Now, this is the reason why I talked about letting the wood acclimate to your shop. We want the wood moisture content to be the same all the way around. But when we cut this, the content was a little bit different on the inside compared to the outside. So I milled all of this nice and flat, let it sit, now look at it, there's a slight bow. It is not perfectly flat anymore as the wood has acclimated. So that's the reason why we want it to sit. Now we can remill it and we know that we're going to get super flat boards. I 
I took the lid out of the clamps and it is dead flat. Much different than when we first milled it and let it acclimate to the shop. Remember, it had a slight bow to it after it sat there releasing the moisture. That's why we remilled it up. But now it's flat and it's ready to go. As far as getting this to fit onto the box, I'm gonna go simple with it. I'm gonna do rabbit joints. So I'm gonna cut rabbits all the way around the perimeter. And I do that over the table saw using a ripping blade. The lid fits great and it has a little bit of wiggle room that way if there is any sort of expansion and contraction then it'll still fit and we won't have to worry about it splitting or anything but i can tell you the box looks fantastic the way it is but there's going to be one more thing we're going to do and that's going to be to put a brass inlay so i have this thick piece of 1 8 inch thick brass nice and hefty and we are going to put that as a stripe into the lid it's going to give it more of a modern look now to do that, there's a couple things we need to do. First, we need to cut a groove into our lid that will house this and then sand it all down. And we'll also have to do a little bit of prep work on this brass to make it stay into the wood. This brass looks super cool. So now we gotta prep it so we can actually stick it in here into the box. So there's a couple things we need to do. First is I always like to clean it with some mineral spirits. It gets all that dirt and grime and grease off of it. Once it's clean, then I like to hit it with some sandpaper. And my preference is just some 120 grit, scuff it all up, and that's gonna give us something for our adhesive to stick to. I've tried different adhesives over the years, and the one that works the best for me is CA glue. And that's great because it dries super fast so I can move on with my project. But you gotta do that prep work ahead of time. You gotta clean it off, you gotta scuff sand it so that glue has something to stick to. And I've never had a problem with any of the brass or the aluminum or other metals I've used delaminating off the wood, even when it expands and contracts. I'm super excited about this part. It's time to apply finish. I'm gonna go with Osmo. It's a hard wax finish. I get asked on a fairly consistent basis, what type of finish should you apply if you have metal incorporated with wood? Now, I can only speak to you from my experience. I've applied different types of finishes, lacquer, wipe-on, varnishes or polys, wax finishes. I've never had an issue where the finish actually came off of the metal but I also don't apply a lot of thick film finishes. So whenever I do apply a finish that has a film to it, I don't apply a lot of layers to that. Think of it this way. If you look at the back of the can of the finish you're using, usually it has instructions that say, sand your item to 150 grit or do not sand higher than 220 grit. That's usually because the finish needs something to adhere to. And if you polish the metal to a super high polish, there's just nothing there for it to stick to. If you're having a problem with your finish adhering to the metal, here's a couple things you can do. One, you can apply a wax finish over the top of your project. 
So for my case, I'm doing a hard wax finish. I know I'm not gonna have any issues with the wax on the wood or on the metal. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna apply a film finish, then you may have to mask off the metal, apply the finish, and then apply wax or some sort of buffing compound specifically to the metal to make sure you shine it all up. I probably made a couple dozen modern looking boxes like this that incorporate metal. And I have to say, this one might be my favorite. I love that walnut lid, especially that linear grain with the brass stripe. I think those two just work absolutely perfect together. I hope this video gave you some ideas on what you can do for your next project. If you think about it, this is a basic box, but because of the things we did to it, the brass we added, the materials we selected, the attention we put into it, we were able to take something that was basic and really make it something super cool. So if you decide that you want to make something like this, then leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how it goes for you. And if you're on other things like Instagram, post the pictures of it, tag me on it. I love seeing those sorts of things because that gives me inspiration for my next projects. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.